Hey everybody, this is Gary Fong, and I'm here to do an updated Shungite about Shungite video. Now, I did one about a couple years ago, maybe, and I was completely goofing around because I was just really excited about this rock I bought and all of the things that it was doing for me. Um, but it was late at night, and it was on a webcam, there was no lighting, and it was really different than the production quality of all of the rest of our videos that we do for the photo channel. But you know what? It's my station, my channel, and I will talk about what I'm excited about. And so at that time, it was Shungite. And obviously, it seemed to strike a resonant chord with a lot of people because it had a lot of views. And we got inundated with requests on uh, more information about Shungite on my photography uh, website. So here we go. I went in and researched, um, you know, uh, protective things for EMFs. And uh, so the thing that came up most often was this mysterious rock called Shungite. Uh, sounded very weird. It looked like uh, black glass, shattered glass, um, which is kind of how the Chinese have been counterfeiting it. They've been giving you black uh, shattered glass and calling it Shungite and charging you a lot of money for it, unfortunately. Um, but... Uh, so I wanted to look into the properties of it and did, did kind of a Google search. First thing I found was that uh, it had been the subject of the 1996 Chemistry Nobel Prize. These uh, researchers had found the molecular structure of the Shungite rock, and it happens to be 60 carbon molecules clustered together to form a soccer ball of mostly hexagons and some pentagons, but it was 60 carbon molecules clustered together in this ball. And inherently, I knew that there was something very powerful in that because having had to take organic chemistry, you know, we learned about... Um, the benzene ring and the aromatic compounds that, that, that are shaped with it and the ability for the benzene ring to go from bivalent to single valent and, um, and kind of turn and it turns in a clockwise direction. And then you take all those carbon molecules and then you cluster them up because uh, carbon is very, very much like the magnet of the universe. It wants to bond to everything, carbon dioxide, sugar molecule, uh, everything in DNA or RNA or proteins or um, everything in organic living matter happens to be centered around carbon, which is why in organic, organic chemistry, it is the study of carbon compounds. It's got what's called bond affinity. It's basically a magnet, and it just wants to suck everything in. So you bind it up in a soccer ball, and it'll have some very interesting properties, like it'll break apart the AIDS virus. It's also been shown to increase the lifespan of laboratory mice by 90% which has also been proven. This is not just some malarkey. This is actually in scientific papers. It's also been shown to drastically reduce EMFs. And I'm going to show you a demonstration of how powerful it is for that. So what I did was I bought this really cool EMF meter. First thing I did was I took it in front of uh, the router. And you'll see what happens is even when I put my hand in front of the router, it absorbs a lot of the radiation my hand does, um, but still a lot of radiation passes through onto this meter. Okay, so that's my hand in front of it. Take my hand away. My hand. Okay, now here comes the Shungite. Take away the Shungite. Hand's not in it because I got my little lever here. Hand. Shungite. I also found this really amazing article on uh, Kathy Ireland's Modern Living where a beekeeper uh, who was used to having many of his hives collapse uh, due to microwave radiation started to find that he could create a Faraday cage by painting his beehives uh, with a box using Shungite powder. And ever since he started doing that, he found that there was no uh, collapsing beehives. Many bees are struggling with colony collapse disorder and other environmental hazards that are reducing their numbers. Derek Condit, co-founder of Cosmic Reality Shungite, joins us today to talk about how Shungite protects bees and the environment. So when you're around these harmful frequencies, your body, and be it a bee or a human, is in a state of repair continually, which keeps you from being at your peak state of being. 
So shungite has an effect on these frequencies, attenuating them or changing them. So when shungite is integrated either around an individual or in our case, mixed into the paint of a beehive where we paint the exterior, in essence, we've created what's called a Faraday cage, stopping or attenuating the harmful frequencies from reaching the bees while they're at the hives, thus promoting their peak health. We're actually in our fourth year now, and to this point, we've had no colony collapse disorder losses in our beehives. Wow. So how's it that Shungite has these amazing properties? Well, first of all, let's think about the spin direction of the universe. There is a principle in electricity and magnetism and physics that says that if you have current running through a wire, it will create a magnetic field that's measurable by um, in the direction of if your thumb goes where the current is, your fingers will show where the magnetic spin is, the magnetic um, flux. And so the interesting thing is, is that um, we were just at a uh, little get-together, and this uh, Dr. Ross Anderson from here in Kelowna had this uh, piece of uh, just, it was a, a carved, uh, a very interesting object, and he had someone at the table spin it in a clockwise direction. And we sat and just, wow, this thing will not stop spinning. It kept spinning and spinning. Then the volunteer was asked to spin it in the opposite direction, counterclockwise, and it stopped, and then it started to go clockwise again, which every, everyone thought was quite amazing. No, that's what It'll I mean. go forever if you spin it harder. No, it's amazing how long it's going. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it, it doesn't have much contact with the glass, and it's on glass, which is the perfect surface. Right. What? Wow, man, it just keeps going. Okay, would you spin it the other way, please, Mr. Volunteer? <laughs> wow. The reason that is, is because the flux of universal light energy that comes, uh, say, from above, let's just say that there's all these vectors that come down. Look at the way my fingers are pointing. Of course, they're clockwise, right? So everything that kind of comes down or is coming from the universe has a clockwise spin. Let's just, let's just put it that way. The benzene molecule of the carbon atom also has a spin. Let's call it clockwise. And so you lock, put a whole bunch of carbon molecules together, and you've got quite a spin generator. The buckyball, of course, radiates out in a spherical pattern, sending out this kind of very, very powerful positive spin. Locking in a bunch of buckyballs together creates a massive uh, spin radiator that spins in the positive direction or, the, uh, or in, in the harmonious direction of all things that are in balance with living matter. So things like viruses uh, or um, EMFs or things like that all tend to spin in the opposite direction, which is why they're disruptive to life forces. But what it really does is it neutralizes that counteractive spin that would be disruptive to biological systems by radiating out a spin uh, that, that neutralizes. So just think about this guy. This is a EMF and it's spinning in that direction and you've got a shunga, I can't do this, uh, in the other direction and they meet and then it neutralizes this guy and, and disables the spin and therefore you've taken away the harm that it could do to your biological systems. Now, quite an amazing thing. Glad to bring it to you and fascinated by the topic. Thanks for watching.